Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gentle Dog Trainers channel. I'm your host Olivia De Santos and today we're talking about a very important but very serious topic. Why are certain dog breeds banned? Now we're going to be talking about this in an Australian lens but it's most likely that wherever you are watching this from there will, will be some banned dog breeds and these are breeds that are seen to be dangerous or just not fit to be part of human society and why is that? We're going to talk about why today and our thoughts on this whole topic but before we dive in I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. If you want to raise happy, healthy and well behaved dogs we talk about all things in the dog world to help you be the best possible dog owner that you can be. We also talk about some interesting and unique topics like this one so if you're interested in this type of content then please do click the subscribe button and click that little notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Now, let's talk about banned dog breed. So let's just answer the question, why are certain dog breeds banned? And the very short and hardly sweet answer is dog fighting. Dog fighting is the big reason why so many dog breeds are banned. And the history of dog fighting is actually very interesting. Dog fighting actually started in Roman society. It traces all the way back to Roman Colosseums and things like this where pitting animals against each other was seen as the norm as well as humans as you've probably seen in Gladiator. So it's really, so it traces back all of that time and has been actually quite consistent in human society since then. We only started putting in laws in place to protect against dog abuse and against dog fighting in the 1990s which is crazy to think of, absolutely insane to think of when you think about how long this has been going on and how long and how long these dogs have been abused for. So the crux of it is that to avoid people breeding dogs for dog fighting, uh, they have created a blanket ban on the dog breed in general. So the idea is that if you increase the number of dogs, then you will increase the incidences of dog fighting. But the truth is actually very rarely, the dog fighting industry is a million dollar industry. It makes so much money and it's just a seedy underground industry that poisons the well of dog ownership in general. And there hasn't really been a huge decline in the dog fighting industry since these dog breeds have been banned. But this is the reasoning for it. Now in Australia, there are five dog breeds that are on the restricted dog breed list. And I'll talk about what a strict, restricted dog is in a second. Uh, but these are pit bulls, Presa Canario, Doggo Argentinos, Japanese Tosas, and Fila Brasileiros. And just a couple of honorable mentions, Cane Corsos, we're not entirely sure whether they are completely banned or not. Um, we would, to be honest, they are in such, such short supply that there is so, so few Cane Corsos left in Australia in particular that it's probably not even worth being on the restricted dog breeds list because they're basically a dying out breed. Um, but there is a bit of a gray area as to whether Cane Corsos are banned or not. Wolfhounds are also a gray area. So wolfhounds meaning, so wolfhounds meaning uh, dogs that have been bred from actual wolves or crossbred with wolves. Uh, those are also a grey area when it comes to being banned. They definitely can't be imported and there are very, very few of them in Australia in general, but there is a bit of a grey area there. And Staffordshire Terriers. So even though Staffordshire Terriers are completely legal, they do have similar characteristics to a lot of the banned dog breed list. And so that is why you actually need to declare if you have a Staffy and you have to be able to show their lineage having been a Staffordshire Terrier and show that they are actually a purebred Staffordshire Terrier and not one of the other breeds on the list. Really interesting, right? And it goes into why I think brand dog breeds are dumb, but we'll come back to that at the end. So what are restricted dog breeds? Restricted dog breeds are technically the same thing as a banned dog breed, but you are allowed to own the dog. So if you have 
one of these dog breeds you are allowed to own them but under a lot of very strict restrictions and i'm going to read those out to you now if you own a restricted dog breed you will need to declare them as such to the local council and then you may be subjected to the following requirements depending on the state you're in so the first thing is obligatory desexing. This means spaying or neutering your dog so that they cannot be bred. Second is obligatory microchipping so that you can keep track of the dog and that the council can also keep track of the dog. Third is a formal identification with a red and yellow collar. This is an obligatory um, way of denoting restricted dog breeds in certain states but again this depends on your local council. Fourth is that warning signs must be clearly showcased to let others know that this is a restricted dog breed um, that is on your premises so this means signage outside your home or, um, or place of work. Fifth is housing. Housing must be secure both indoors and outdoors to prevent escape of your dog. Your dog must not be off the lead during walks at any time under any circumstance. Sixth, the dog must be muzzled and leashed when outside of their premises. Seventh, the, co the council must be notified within 24 hours if your dog goes missing. Your dog has a change of ownership. You change your address. Uh, the place where your dog is kept changes or the municipality of your dog changes so if you move from state to state and finally number eight is the prohibition of selling giving away or trading the dog except if the owner dies or if the owner gives the dog to a council or animal shelter So as long as you follow those guidelines, you are permitted to own the dog. This dog shouldn't be bred though. So if you buy this dog from a breeder, then that breeder should really be reported. If you think that someone has sold you a restricted dog breed, then you should absolutely get in contact with the authorities because they shouldn't be breeding those dogs by law. This is where I tell you my opinion on why dog breeds shouldn't be banned. Uh, basically why banning dog breeds in general is dumb. The first point I have is that many dog breeds, many dogs have been seen as dangerous and a threat to society before. So Labradors were once banned dog breeds, German Shepherds, Staffordshire Terriers, these were all banned dog breeds at one point and it's interesting to see the evolution of which breeds are banned at certain times in history. Another point is that banning dog breeds misunderstands why dog fighting happens. Dog fighting doesn't happen because of the nature of the dogs. It happens because the nature of the humans that are breeding these dogs. It's the humans that raise them to be these killing machines. They were not born to be that way. In fact, pit bull terriers in particular are absolute softies. They are the sweetest little dogs. They used to be nanny dogs in America. In the 19th century, they used to be nanny dogs for wealthy American families because they are excellent with children. Pit bulls love children. They are really playful, really gentle, and just got on great with small babies and toddlers. But that sounds crazy to us because they've been reported as these like super dangerous and super you know aggressive and horrible dogs when that's not true at all it just depends on how that dog was raised all of these dogs i would say do need you know a lot of discipline as they are being raised but all dogs need a lot of discipline when they're being raised there are some dogs that have you know maybe a slightly friendlier disposition as they are brought up but pit bulls are one of those dogs you know they are super super friendly but let's take for example a dog or argentino which is not quite as lovely and soft and mushy as the pit bull then as long as you raise that dog in a happy and healthy home and they are well socialized and they meet other dogs, they meet other animals, they meet children, they meet a wide range of people, then that dog will be then that dog will be super friendly, super outgoing and super lovely. So 
it completely depends on how that dog is raised and not the disposition of the dog as to why dog fighting exists. The third point I have here is that by banning dog breeds, we basically condemn those breeds to being raised in abuse. Just because they are banned doesn't mean they're not being bred. This is the problem. They are still being bred, but they are being bred automatically to be raised into dog fighting. They are raised into the system that abuses them and just perpetuates this horrible cycle. There's no end to it unless there is no end to it by banning the dog breeds because they are still being bred, they're just being kept underground, they're being kept in cages, they're being kept out of sight so that they can make the humans that, so that they can make the people who run these industries a ton of money but not have a happy or healthy life at all. And that's just really heartbreaking to me and I hope and I'm sure it must be heartbreaking to you as someone who loves dogs as well. So, whew, quite an emotional uh, episode today. I just wanted to talk you through why certain dog breeds are banned, and what restricted dog breeds are, and my thoughts on dog breeds being brand and my thoughts on dog breeds being banned in general. If you want to dive into this a bit more, I have written a very detailed article about this on the Gentle Dog Trainers blog, so do check that out in the description box down below. We will talk about something a little bit happier. I've been Olivia De Santos for the Gentle Dog Trainers channel and I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>